and we are back in Clearwater. We are the Battle Zone Boxing Gym, and I am with Royal Ryan Reaver, the unbeaten bare knuckle superstar who soon will be fighting for the championship. But first, I want to ask you, Ryan, condition wise, you're fighting in June, you're preparing, you just finished fighting two weeks ago. Um, how do you know you're ready to go as far as, is there a limit as far as injuries that you have to weigh a time range before you can schedule your next fight? Well, now, if I would have got cut in my last fight, I do believe in a cut that required stitches. I do believe they require a three-month uh, period, you know, and then you got to recheck in with the doctor, and then we're getting good to go. But, I mean, this fight, man, my hands, you know, they're a little sore. Nothing was broke. Nothing was cut or broken on my face. So, I mean, I'm trying, as soon as I'm healthy, I'm back in the gym, like I said, this week, and, you know, I look to just continue to, to move forward man i'm going to talk to management talk to my coaches and we're going to see what's next man but uh, i'm i'm you know I want that. hey you don't have to give me all scoop because we don't give you all the secrets us fighter we just give you something we play and we play that possible but what is your routine you start this week to prepare to fight for the belt man what is your schedule going to be looking like five six days a week day and night morning Yes, sir. I'm going to do a session in the morning. We do a session at night. And uh, you, you, we usually run the two-a-days. I incorporate the running in there. And, I mean, the, the level of work that is put through in this gym is really enough to kill the average man, you know, just with one session. So, you know, and, and, and not only that, it mentally prepares us, man. And I don't just train my body. I train my mind. I meditate every single day. That's a very important part is the mental work, man. A lot of people, they forget the mental aspect of the fight game. So when they get in there, that pressure... You know, it busts them pipes, man, instead of form a diamond. And that's very, very, very important is the mental work. Now, I know uh, as fighters, um, that's why it's so important when you have a good team, good coach in your corner. Uh, when you're in there, man, your total focus is uh, just fighting. But as far as uh, you want to get so prepared, sometimes we forget we're doing too much of this, too much of that. How you watch yourself from being injured while you're working and getting preparing yourself for a fight? Man, I just listen to my body, man. You know, if, if I'm feeling I'm in here and I'm not going as hard as I was the day before, it might be time to take, you know, a day off. You know, if something's sore, you know, to the point where I shouldn't be working it, we're going to work something different. Um, you know, there's always ways around everything, but there's no, you know, substitute for rest in, you know, you know, the proper sleep and the things like that. And that I get plenty of, man. So at the end of the day, you know, we just grind, man. Just continue to grind. Hey, listen, the fight comes now you got you got a great coach um what is the strategy that that you always as far as some fighters you know they're kind of stubborn and then you got the fighters that are, they're they listen and then you got the fighters that it doesn't matter how much i teach you if you can't apply in the ring it's not going to work well, absolutely. I mean, we try to break down a lot of the same repetitive stuff so that way it, you know, turns into a muscle memory thing. I mean, I can't sit here and lie. Like, everything that we work on and everything we do, I go out there and implement it. But we sure do, you know, try to, you know, try try to do what we train to do in here. And, you know, and that's not only be dominant, but, you know, have plenty of energy for the whole fight, you know. And, and um that's one thing we don't lack in here is conditioning, not even a tiny bit. So, I mean, for these coaches to put me through what they put me through and carry the same energy every single time I step through those doors is key to me, man. So we share something absolutely, you know, absolutely tremendously great here, man, and that's energy, man. And, you know, I, we vibrate at such a high level. Coach vibrates at such a high level. You know, it, it, it really can't be matched, man, and that's how winning is done, in my opinion. Hey, you know, and uh, I always say as a conditioned trainer, I think uh, everybody it's got their percentage. I think 90% is condition, 10 is mental because uh, even if you run in trouble with a guy that's stronger or just is having a better night than you, but you are in a lot better shape, you can always find ways to, to, to kind of change the rhythm. Absolutely, man. And that's what it was about in this last fight. I kind of started off cold, kind of got taken off guard, um, felt a little winded myself, but, you know, I caught that second wind and I know that we train extra hard extraordinarily hard in here and you know it, it paid off man and you know the 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 proof is in the pudding man it's in the fight man and i work hard at this shit every day i live sleep eat dream it i'll be in the kitchen making a damn sandwich 
<laughs> throwing jabs at, at the invisible enemy that's there, man. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta really want this shit, man. And hey, De Derek Perez, that was your opponent, man. A uh, tough guy. Anybody that steps in here, whether it's gloves, whether it's bare knuckles, you, you got heart. Oh man, I mean, I, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure we loosened some teeth up. I seen a whole skull, um, and how he walked through. Pretty much all my punches, I just, I don't see anybody else in that division doing it. And he knew what was on the line. He just mowed through uh, another undefeated fighter before me. So, I mean, these guys that I'm fighting, not only did they have a ton more experience than me as professional athletes before, but they're fucking the toughest dudes on the planet. And I guarantee you he would make it through probably the the top five guys in my division, to be honest. Hey, I'm not trying to get no cookie points here. And he's definitely not paying me the access, but your speed, man, your accuracy. When you when you went for the kill, man, you actually, it looked like you were not going to stop unless the rest stopped the fight or he just dropped. Absolutely, it man. Down to it, man. Yeah, so my first fight, if you, if you guys watch my first fight, I did the same thing. He got his mouthpiece spit out and he stopped and pointed at it. And I looked too and the ref was like, you could have kept going. And by the time I started to go again, I messed my whole highlight reel up because of that. So this fight, I was like, bro, you're either going to hit the ground, the canvas, or the ref's going to have to jump in for me for, to stop this shit, man, because I knew I was down on the scorecards. But it doesn't matter to me, man. And it's like I say to anybody I do an interview with or anybody I'm around, I don't care about winning and I don't care about losing. I care about going in there, emptying my mind, being formless and shapeless, just like water, just like Bruce said, and then finding the eternal energy to not only perform how I know I can perform, and if I perform at that level, I can't be stopped. You know what I mean? And, you know, and, and it's a process you learn because now you know the next time somebody spits their mouthpiece, you know, you're not going to wait unless the referee, you swat his hands right across you, of course, you don't want to get, you don't want to get fouled, point take over, you're just going to go ahead and keep firing. Yeah, absolutely, man. You don't want to pump the brakes, you don't want to stop, especially in this sport when you see kill, because we both are paid killers. We're both paid to do the same thing, and if he could have done that to me, he would have done it to me, you know what I mean? So it's, you know, it's all love at the end of the day because love is the best energy you could possibly promote out there. But I could I could show you a lot of love and still kick your ass, man. You know, we do it every day. <laughs> hey, Ryan Reva, you know, we just don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be a doctor. Wake up in the morning, I'm going to be a bare knuckle. What is, and motivation is good, but I would say it's temporary. What is your drive, man? What gets you up? and want this what is the one thing that's not going to stop you from getting that goal wrapped around your waist just the fact that i know that it's in arms reach away and i've already made it so high to the highest level of this sport to be ranked where i should be right now as the number one guy in the world in my organization that to me is motivation enough to make me get up and just strive for greatness complete and utter greatness and just like my man said here said that this is coming up like the uh, ufc was back in the early 90s and i seen the same thing when i first joined it two three years ago and look I i'm gonna be a pioneer of this thing man my name will forever be cemented in bare knuckle history off of what I've already accomplished and how I've done it, especially with no tremendous background. Now, let's not be, you know, confused that I've been doing this for 20 something years of my life ever since I was 16. I'm 36 now. And I mean, that definitely helps. But as far as competitively as a professional, not very long, man. And to already accomplish what I've accomplished and be at the level that I'm at is just all the motivation I need right there. Hey, and another thing, Ryan Reaver, and honestly, this is not for everybody or this is for everybody? <laughs> this ain't for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for everybody, and I don't think I'll get in the... Go ahead. I, it gave degenerates like me that the boxing ship sailed, you know, many, many uh, years ago. The MMA ship sailed. It gave me a new, a new platform to showcase fighting, but you got to be a fighter, man. You can't, and it's just like Bruce said, man, there, I, to me, there's no such thing as style. I could be a brawler. I could be a boxer i could be you know now a clench fighter you know what i mean like anything and everything is what you have to adjust to in your sport if it requires you that you could grab you better learn it if it requires you you could do a spin you better learn it whatever it is you know you better learn it man and you better train diligently and you better train hard man because the next guy's coming for that ass you know and that is a fact and then mr reaver Another thing is our distraction. I mean, sometimes we get distracted, but we could still, it could be a thousand people screaming, but you hear that one voice and that's your coach. And 
how do you train for that just to recognize your corner recognize when there's trouble recognize when they want you to just compose yourself even if you're here and they can't wait for you to get over there because we're talking about bare knuckles here one punch could end it you're absolutely man i mean yeah you got to be conscious of that voice man sometimes i am and sometimes i'm not but every single time no matter what he knows how to dig into me just right to get me to get what he wants out of me man and you know i hate doing that to him man coach i love you i'm sorry for that man but you know it is just the way it is sometimes man Hey, listen, and the other one is the at my field. I went to the one in Lake, and that was my first experience. I've been to many, many fights, all kinds of fights, man. But I can feel the electrifying energy in there, man. But when you hear that crowd, especially having to go sudden death, man, what is going through your mind now? Oh, man, I don't want to be here. But you know what? I, this is what I chose to do, and like I said, to have a genuine coach in my corner that's going to light a fire under my tail end and pull me up and let me, you know, be like, yeah, man, this is what we're going to finish this, and we finished it, man. Hey, Ryan, Royal Ryan Reaver, and we're going to come back after this, and we're going to do a little example because some people say, yeah, they got some stuff underneath that wrap. We're going to actually wrap his hand so you guys can see how much wrap these warriors have before that bell rang but we'll be right back after this man <laughs> 